podcast where we motivate, but inspire, and drive with stories from entrepreneurs from around the country. That's right, folks, straight from their mouths to your ears. This is Hustle City USA. What's up, hustlers? You're tuned into Hustle City USA, and on today's episode, we go nuts and bolts at Harley Davidson Spokes with Mike Mize of Good Promotions. Hear Mike's startup story and how he recovered from a horrific motorcycle accident just recently. Also today, sponsored by Winsurance, winsurancetx.com. When you need insurance, you need Winsurance. Samantha Bowers, Mitzi Vaughn, Brian Daniele. Check them out at winsurancetx.com. The right coverage at the right price. If you uh, if you walk a couple feet behind this wall, you'll see I have an F with a bomb sitting on it on my uh, desk as a paperweight. Yeah, yeah. When I was a um, <laughs> medical manager, one of the girls I did recruiting, one of the girls got it for me, and I've kept it since. I always said That's I was awesome. going to throw it at people if they but. annoyed me. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. so Robin with us today, Mike Mize. Mm-hmm. Oh Mike Mize. I feel like the man invented me. Invented you? Yes, he invented me. Well, he branded he, me. He has. That's what I was going to say. He has branded and invented a lot of people, including this this podcast. Yes. Yes, mm-hmm. you did. Well, sort of, kind of. Well, we need you to do something with that image up there, too. At some point. Yeah, we just finally figured out how to turn it around on camera. <laughs> yesterday <laughs> we can do that we can make just about anything out of what you want mm. look at that go mm-hmm. just preferably not an orange shag carpet <laughs> we can make those things. you can make shag carpet absolutely too. oh gosh mm-hmm. don't tell him that actually we're in the market for a rug your right? eyes just got really big they got really <laughs> I, the one thing that i wanted is a rug because i'm loud and i know this echoes right uh-huh. i mean it's just natural so i was like let's get a rug and he goes orange shag well, I found some free orange shag, and it went in the front door and straight out the back. It wasn't in, in the right, shape yeah. as I thought it right. was. And, and it wasn't really free because you had to drive an hour and a half. Yes. Well, if it was like real shag from the 70s. It, it was. was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's no good. <laughs> no good anymore. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah. really funny. So, so, Robin, you want to introduce Mike? So, Mike Mize is with Good Promotions. He is the design extraordinaire. He's the brander. I say brander because he brands almost all of the agents. So that's what y'all talk about behind my back. He's a nerd. No, he's a nerd. nerd. He's a branding nerd. Well, no. Not, not me because I didn't know you really did anything. I thought the staff did everything. Right. And you yeah. just I just tell them what to do. So yeah. you do some of the design and stuff as well? I do a lot of design, yes. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All day, that. every day I do design. Wow. He reads people. But you've got designers as well, right? Or no? Uh, we have a full-time artist. And then we have another part-time artist, and then we have myself, mm-hmm. and then we have two other managers that also handle artwork as well. Mm-hmm. But you're the, I feel like you, you're the design brain, because you yeah. get into people's, you get to know people. Yeah. The other guys, they're more um, production-minded. You know, they're, they're working on uh, production stuff. It's, it's like the everyday, you know, hey, knock this shirt out, knock this, you know, business card out, knock this out. It's it's set with companies that are already you know they're already branded they already have their logo they already right. have a company name they already have all that together and they come in and just want some shirts so it's pretty easy to put that stuff together it's not creating new stuff you know um, so that side of things especially with the realtors is my cup of tea so. yeah so so let me ask you then it makes me think so you've got some people and I'll reiterate sort of what you said you know they come in with like their State Farm logo or whatever sort of their corporate brand their mm-hmm. corporate identity gives them guys that we produce. Right. But other people you kind of spend time with, you get to know who they are, what they do. Like me. And and, and help them create an image that maybe they hadn't even visualized yet. Yeah. And when you say spend time, (laughs) that's that's an understatement. There's a lot of time that goes into it. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where a lot of people will come in without a clue. Mm Mm-hmm. They just know they need something, some kind of brand. John right. sends them my way and says, hey, you need to brand yourself. <laughs> you know, yes, we're JLA. Yes, we have a logo. We have all the stuff, and you're more than welcome to take that and just kind of you know, put your name and, and phone number in with that, the standard templates, and run with that. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, if you want to brand yourself, it's all about you. I want you to know, you know, everybody to know who you are. Mm-hmm. Stand out among yeah. the crowd. Yeah. I mean, there's and a so lot of it. It's all about you. When they're buying a house, they're buying a house from you. That's right. You know, and when they're listing their house, they're listing it with you. They could care less about everything else. So, you know, with that being said, it's like everybody comes to me with, well, I don't know what 
<laughs> I just need a brand, and you know, they have no clue whatsoever. So, and, and John tells them, I'll just go see Mike. Well, and they don't know who they are. <laughs> I'll figure it out okay. for you. <laughs> I think the main thing is they don't know who they are. We're told, we're told, we a try to people. figure out who we are, and we have no idea. Yeah. So, and, then, and then you have people like Robin mm-hmm. that, this, and this is no joke, the same day Robin sent me an email, said, Hey, Mike, this is, this is what I want. It was some thing from Etsy. Etsy, mm-hmm. yeah, something from Etsy. Mm-hmm. Well, Etsy sells this design package that mm-hmm. anybody and everybody can buy. Right. So anybody and everybody has it already. That's right. And it's not individual. It's not custom. It's not And the listing even says it on, on Etsy. Yeah, it the, says the, that. they have a little disclaimer that says, hey, this is not you know, a personal thing. We sell this to anybody and everybody who wants to buy it. Right. And so she sent me that that day, and literally two or, two or three other people that day Sent you the same thing. Sent me the exact same oh, screenshot. Wow. And he just loved me more, so he called me. <laughs> yeah, I, call, I called her and said, hey, hold up, okay? You can't do this. Right. Already, I would have told her, hey, I'm not doing that for you because I just know that. Mm-hmm. But it just so happened that two other people sent me the exact same thing, and there's already a fourth person that's using it already. So they already claimed it right. and is using it, and they're in JLA. Oh, wow. Yeah, so all four of the people... Or in jail already. Uh, so, so, so let me ask and keep JLA in the equation if you want or take it out. But being in the industry for the years that you have, you told me pre show, do you find now that more people come to you and say, hey, I need a brand? Or they come to you and they need something, hey, it's just kind of generic. I've already got a brand or it's been 50 50. No, I think more people want a brand. There, there are several people. I just got a phone call earlier waiting for the show to start mm-hmm. with the new agent mm-hmm. that's just ordering riders. Right. So they're just going to order a name rider. Um, with their name and number, and they're going to use an office sign, and so that's pretty typical. Um, about half, about half the time to start. Mm-hmm. So the new agent will come in. They don't know, you know, what JLA does and how they do it. So they'll come in and say, "Okay, I just, I guess I just need a name writer." Yeah, what do I do? Yeah, and that's all they get. So they get the name writer. They use an office sign. Once they know and they start seeing everything that's involved in JLA, all the custom designs and all that stuff, and the their ability to do that or their mm-hmm. option to do that, John allows that to happen. Then they come to me and say, oh, so I can do my own stuff? Like I can brand my own thing? I can do my own thing? I can do it. I've always wanted to have this or something. They show me something on their phone. I've always wanted this. Okay, cool. Let's make you something new. So I have several people's files that started off with a name writer or maybe even a, a regular yard sign that has the regular JLA template, but it, we just change their name and number out on it. Sure. So they, they start with that, but then they'll eventually come around and say, okay, it's time for me to brand myself. So inside your shop, <coughs> I'm just trying to visualize this, you've got X amount of people that are with ABC Corporation, and they all get what that corporation's worth is. But right. then you've got a client like JLA with 800 people to get 800 different things. I mean, I mean that's gotta be that only taxing makes it on a, some level. That only makes it a mess for me. Right? <laughs> as far as the production side of it, to make a sign is to make a sign. So a sign is a sign, no so matter you're, what goes on. It. You're glutton for punishment then, because you get all of the crazy squirrels that come out. Because no matter what, you still do more than just real estate design and branding. You do additional stuff. Because I've oh, been yeah. to your shop. He does T-shirts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All the high, high the high schools up there. Mm-hmm. We have all the schools, all the mm-hmm. local businesses, all the local charities, all the local everything. So, you know, uh, we, we do stuff for the local Walmart, for the local Jack in the Box, for, you know, um, Sonic and, and all that stuff. We do a lot of stuff for them. Um, all the all the individual businesses, uh, e- either corporately owned or, or individually owned, mm-hmm. you know, uh, we do all of their stuff. So <clears throat> we do a lot of wholesale work mm-hmm. for okay. other sign companies, yeah. other um, t-shirt companies, other print shops, whatever. Yes. So we do a lot of wholesale work because we do a lot of our work in-house. You do? No, yeah. you do. I've actually seen things yeah. coming off the printer. Yeah, so we have a pretty <laughs> awesome, uh, and, and one day, next time you're around, I'll, I'll take you to the back um, production area. Ooh, we have fun. two big, huge screen printing machines that screen print t-shirts. I've seen that. Mm-hmm. Oh, and here I was thinking, Mike, here I was thinking I was special or something. You're special. Oh, my heart just broke a little bit. We have a huge uh, embroidery department with two different uh, you know, commercial, heavy-duty embroidery machines. Mm-hmm. They're, they're not like 
you know, grandma's embroidery machine. So we, we have the one I had at home. Yeah, we have a pretty awesome setup going on. Um, that's happened over the years and built up to this point, you know. So we do a lot of work for all of those kinds of companies. And, and by local, you mean Cleveland, because I forgot to mention well, that. You're up in Cleveland. We are in Cleveland, but we do business with people all over Texas and outside of Texas. We have, right. I mean, we got Angelina College. We do a ton of work with Angelina College up around the Lufkin area. Oh, we, awesome. Um, we do a lot of stuff with people in Houston. We do a lot of stuff with people all over the place. Cleveland, Cleveland is really small. Of course, we have all our local stuff, schools and all that stuff, but, you know, we do schools um, all over how are people yeah. finding you? Do you have outside salespeople, or how do they know? No, nope, we have no outside salespeople. Just, just online how presence. Did, yeah, how did that's the, how did we it don't, start? We don't advertise anywhere. We don't have phone book. We don't have. Wait, wait, you don't have a phone book? Yet? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a phone book. Do they book still yet? have phone books? No, I don't know. Yes, they do. <laughs> right. I get one. I get one delivered to my yeah. house every four months, and then it gets wet yeah. from the rain. Right. They're, they're much smaller. It ends up in the trash. Yeah. It does end up in the trash. So it does. Way back. Way back. You know, years ago, we had a, a, a phone book ad and all that stuff. But we do have websites and all that stuff, whatever. But we don't advertise it or any of that. Probably, I would have to say, seventy-five percent of our business is referrals. Referrals. That's and, huge. And just decide now before we get too far past phone books. I am now strong enough in my old age to tear a phone book in half. Previously, I couldn't, but now I can. All because you've learned how to do it. It's really simple if you just fold the pages right. You just spread them out, and you can rip a phone book. Oh, my god! Because you're still essentially ripping one page at a time. So, oh, you know, I've watched the strong man things before, too. I learned how to do it. it. Yeah, you, got, you just have to figure it out. See, you know? and you thought you were special because you saw the back room. Well, no, I, 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 I just he just squashed that real small, fast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they are a lot smaller. Oh, that's so funny. So, so Mike, take us back a lot. So, you told me pre-show you've been in the industry about fifteen years. Yep. Um, so you're about fifteen when you got started. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Take, 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 take us back to that and bring us forward. What, what brought you to go? What did you do in a past life? So okay, so. so it's funny when I started out um, years and years ago, I was in sales. I sold cars. I sold vacuum cleaners. I sold. Um, oh my God! Were you a Kirby, Kirby salesman for vacuum? Not Kirby. I sold rainbows. Oh, Kirby's rain competition, competition. Oh, oh, let's not get started on Kirby. Rainbows are. I still believe in them. So let's not go down that path. <laughs> but I sold. I sold perfume and cologne. I sold. Uh, did I say cars? I sold. You did the cars. Storm windows. I sold. I, I, I sold all kinds of things. I haven't sold Harleys, but. Uh, yeah, I buy them. But <laughs> I've sold a lot of stuff. So I, that's what I originally started in. Right. But commission only sales back then, way back when we first started, you know, you, you have your, your lean months and your rich months and all this sort of stuff. So it's not good when you're first starting out, starting a family and, and building right. a family. Mm -hmm. So I ended up getting a job in the electrical field. I became an electrician. How'd you a, do that? Yeah, I don't know. It just happened. So, <laughs> without getting shocked. Without getting know. shocked or anything, you weren't shocked into it. No, uh -uh. We, 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 there was plenty of shocking. Moments, <laughs> right? I'll tell you that. Plenty of shocking moments, but it was, um, uh, it was just one of those things where, hey, hey, I got to get a real job, get a real paycheck every week, and all that stuff. So that sucked. Didn't I it? know. It did. <laughs> I Which kind of hurts my heart mm -hmm. as a salesperson uh, now. Yes. Well, it, it, it'll be okay. we're not in the box, people. Right. We're not. It'll all be okay. And as an electrician, you spend a lot of time in the box. Right? The you do. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh my god! So I was electrician a real for joke there. yeah. <laughs> I was electrician for ten years. Went through the independent electrical contractor school wow. for oh, wow. four years, and did my apprenticeship program through that. Got my electrical license, and basically a licensed electrician in the city of Houston. Like like a master electrician or not a master, just a licensed journeyman. Okay, journeyman electrician. So. I worked on CVS pharmacies. Oh. I built I built CVS pharmacies. I built Walgreens. I built um, Stafford Convention Center. I built um, I worked on the Energy Stadium. Oh, that's in the, awesome! In the electrical rooms, and you know, just a lot of odds and ends. You know, just mm -hmm. you know, worked for a couple of big companies. A lot of downtown high rise buildings, um, doing floor remodels after floor remodels after floor remodels. You know, so I did that for about ten years. Well. I have, I have a little bit of back problems, mm -hmm. back back trouble. So um, that type of construction work was getting to me. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. It's right. it's hot when it's hot outside. It's cold when it's cold outside. You gotta 
work in the rain and the mud and mm -hmm. you know all sorts of stuff. Wait, wait, electricians work in the rain? Look what they, they do. Yeah. 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 That doesn't sound safe. Yeah. Well, well that's, that's like those storms when I track. I try to track when the electricity is coming back on, and I'm thinking, oh, I don't want it to come back on. And then I remember, oh wait, they're probably outside in the rain yeah. with the lightning, mm -hmm. and we're all telling yeah. everybody, don't go outside when it yeah. rains. Yep. Wow. How many times were you shocked? Mm. Well, or electrocuted in a small way. <laughs> yeah. How many times uh, did you almost? Die? Yeah. <laughs> I, I got shocked a lot. It, it became it became a thing where the very first time I didn't think it was real funny. <laughs> <laughs> but my I, boss. Did your wife think it was funny? Well, no, it wasn't too bad. But I mean, I burnt this hole in my thumb. Oh. Yeah. I touched the end of the wire with some, with some you know, pair of pliers in my hand, all this stuff. But my boss, my supervisor on the job. Thought it was the funniest thing. <laughs> and he just laughed and laughed. And he said, Hey, he, well, he just made, hey, everybody look at, you know, initiation. We got Mike. He's initiated. Hey, he finally got hit, you know, ball, ball, whatever. He doesn't have a fingerprint anymore. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's, and, he's and Children, if you want to be an electrician, you do go through initiation. Yeah. So I was on the top of a ladder inside of a, a ceiling grid, like we have in here. Right. Yeah. So I had the ceiling grid out. I was working on a light fixture. The entire floor. No, no electricity to all the wires going to the lights, except for <laughs> the, the one, one room <laughs> that I went in. That was kind of we used for you know meeting and looking at blueprints and stuff. Mm. Well, I didn't know it. The guy said, "Hey, go to all the rooms and wire all the lights. None of them were hot. Okay, none of them were hot. So I'm going bam, bam, bam. I'm just I'm Not wiring up a hundred lights that day. I was just going to town. Right. I got to this one room, grabbed the first piece of wire. I'm up in the ceiling grid with my arms touching the ceiling grid. Oh, wow. mm, so I'm grounded. Metal. Yeah. Mm. And so I went, just grabbed onto that, that wire, and pfft, ouch. Yeah. Did you fall off the ladder? No, I screamed like a girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I always wonder what that yeah, sound of no, somebody getting electrocuted yeah, sound like. I screamed like a girl. <laughs> I threw my pliers about probably 10 feet across the ceiling grid. Wow. You know, and, and I just, like, I freaked out. I looked up, and I had this. This is a perfect little hole in the middle of my thumb from the end of the wire just Ouch. hitting me. And, and your and supervisor's laughing was, but, Oh, yeah, they laugh. I went over and I said, hey, check this out. <laughs> so I my thumb, and he's like, he just died laughing. Everybody just came and, like, patted me on the back. You know? Welcome. Like, Good job. Welcome. Man. Good, jo Good job. Huh? Good job. Oh, yeah, dude. okay. All I have right. a hole in my thumb, but thanks then. so much for yeah. that. Mm -mm. But after mm -mm. that, it became like, oh, okay, you know, get a little shock here, a little shock there, you know, whatever. I mean, there were some sweaty moments where it's like you're okay. messing with some higher voltage and mm -hmm. stuff like that, but... For the most part, you change out plugs, you change out light fixtures and light switches and all this stuff with hot wires. You just learn how to right, work with them. Know. You don't touch them. It's kind of like with hashtags, but did you die? <laughs> but I, I feel like die. You, I feel like you lived that. You lived that hashtag in the best way more than most people I know because it's like you get electrocuted, but did you die? I didn't die. Yeah. Uh, you had. You recently had a. Uh, Accident, a motorcycle accident. So, yeah. so an avid, avid motorcyclist, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So just real quick though, mm -hmm. before we go into that, because that's a, that's yeah. a story in itself. From the electrical side of things, mm -hmm. back to your original question, how did I get into yeah, this? Let's, let's bring you back to good for me. <clears throat> so I, so I was an electrician. Well, I decided I was done with this work, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. done with the construction. Getting electrocuted and all my job. Yeah, that too. So I said, you know, I'm going to do something else. So. I started a little paper, publishing a little paper. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the Fun Fact News. Mm -hmm. And I had little advertisements in there. I would sell advertisements. So and then I would, like the coffee news or something. Exactly like the coffee or news. Or yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing as that. So before that, it was, it was Fun Facts News. So I just had a bunch of fun facts, goofy, weird, off-the-wall information, huh. and just fun reading. Where did you find those? Where would you find those? I don't know. It was on the internet. I was going to say, was it before Google or after Google? <laughs> I just Google? made stuff up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's be real. <laughs> we're not sure if they were really yeah. facts most, or not. Most of it was probably a bunch of junk, but <laughs> I was just trying to sell an ad. That's You're all gonna, I really yeah. cared about. You know? the fa they weren't really facts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Fun made up stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, read it. just read it and give me an ad. Just yeah. read it. So I tried that. I started a little company called Local Impact Advertising, and I was running this little, this little deal, and I was publishing this paper, and I was selling ads. And so what was really kind of weird, I, I kept, as I was going out, I was door to door, knocking door to door, business to business. And mm -hmm. I was just knocking on doors saying, hey, would you like to advertise in my little paper? Yeah. And they're like, well, you know, we already advertise in Houston Community Newspaper. Oh, H HCN, HCN is huge. That's like, a big one. They own all the freaking newspapers. Like, all the newspapers mm -hmm. are owned mm -hmm. by HCN. Right. Yep. And so they're like, man, you know, 
we got we got the green sheet, we got this, we got this, we got this. They got all these newspapers that they're already advertising in, and mm-hmm. they're strapped and here on you their come, advertising like budget. And I'm trying to get them to advertise in this little bitty rinky dink one page kind of folded flyer deal and i'm putting out like five thousand copies a month and yeah you know it's it's not really good circulation all this other stuff and they're like no you know i, I already do enough of that kind of advertising but do you know anybody that makes signs well and let me pause you there you said this was in cleveland splendor cleveland yeah okay, so mm-hmm. you're a native texan or native to the area these are the yes signs. Okay. yes mm-hmm. so it's all transpired all the way up here. Right. Yep, okay. actually, uh, absolutely. Homegrown Texan. Yeah, there you go. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so everybody kept saying, you know, no, I don't need any more of that kind signs. of advertising, but do you know anybody who makes signs or banners? I'm like, no. Next person asked me, hey, I really need a banner out here to say for sale or something like that. I'm like, no. Next person asked me, I said, you know, I make signs. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, I can yeah, do that. How big does it need to be? Yeah, yeah I, I can said, figure yeah, that yeah, out. I make signs, and they were like, oh, you do? Great. And so I would get all the information, <laughs> I, and I'm thinking, holy crap. How so, am I going to do this? Yeah, so I write down all the information, and the very first one, I, I called a sign shop in Kingwood. I said, hey, um, so you do, like, wholesale stuff? Like, can you sell it to me, and then I can sell it to this other person? They were like, yeah. Sure. I said, okay, um, so I need this. So I'm, like, designing on Word, Microsoft Word. <laughs> I'm, like, you know, <laughs> typing up just, like, letters, you know, and I'm, I'm making these stupid little signs up. But these guys printed them. I went, took them, sold them, yeah. and everybody was happy. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I did that. I did that two or three mm-hmm. different times. Sold some banners and some little yard signs, kind of thing. And then this guy says, "Hey, man, I need this like A-frame sign that says Auto Detail here." Mm-hmm. I'm like you know, this A-frame kind of looking sidewalk sign. Right. I said, "Okay, I'm going to make this sign myself. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go to Home Depot. I made a I made a material list." Mm-hmm. I said, all right, I'm going to make this myself. I'm going to go to Home Depot. I'm going to buy some wood. I'm going to buy some hinges. I'm going to buy some wire. I'm going to buy some tape. You're going to get some and tape. And I'm going to tape off the letters, and I'm going to, like, paint it myself, right? <laughs> that sounds like our logo. Stupid. <laughs> this is what I'm thinking, right? I'm, okay, I'm going to do this. And this was the, this was going to be the start of my sign business, right? I was going to recreate homemade the wheel. Homemade by Mike. Homemade yeah, yeah. by Mike. Homemade signs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I pull up in Home Depot. This is Porter and Porter. Mm-hmm. Right. I pull up to Home Depot. I get out of my car. And this truck pulls up right across from me. And he's got some magnets on his, on his door that says, Quality Banner and Sign Company. <laughs> 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 and I stole them. Yeah, there's your <laughs> so, sign. <laughs> so I ran over to him. He's this old man and his wife get out of the truck. So I ran over to him. I said, hey, do you make signs? Yeah. Do you do wholesale signs? Like, <clears throat> man, I've been trying to do this little advertising business, but everybody keeps asking me about signs. So I'm like, I want to start selling signs. And he just stopped and he looked at me and he said, have you ever thought about just doing your own sign business? I said, well, I don't know. I, I mean, got- I'm here to buy hinges and tape <laughs> and paint <laughs> right? and some metal well, and some I, wire. Yeah, so, yeah said, maybe. I said, look, at this point, I have nothing to lose. Yeah. I said, I, I'm, I'm like. I've been trying this little advertising thing. You know, I had a good paycheck coming from the electrical. Mm-hmm. I, I was doing great. You know, insurance, company phone, company vehicle, company gas card, all the stuff, right? About what year was this? Just set the timeline. Well, it was 15 years ago, so. 03, 03, 02, yeah, 03, 03, 03, 04. 04. So I'm like, okay, that's 03, end of 03. Mm-hmm. And so it's a start up. Starting yeah. up is, is mm-hmm. the hardest part. So the dude's like, you know, have you ever have you ever thought about owning your own sign business? I said, Well, I don't know. I mean, you know At this point, why not? Why not? You know, I have nothing to lose. He said, Well, my wife and I are getting older. We're trying to we're we're just putting our sign shop for sale right. in the newspaper. H C N. They they were working on their ad for the newspaper to sell their business. So there's no bitterness in that tone of voice. No. Said it all, H H C N. So so I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, he's like, so are, are you able to just come to my house right now? What? I said, I said sure. Right. So he got back in his truck. Him and his wife. Me and my son. My, my son was with me at the time. We got back in the car. We followed him to his house. He had a house in Kingwood. And he had his, his garage converted into a sign shop. Right? Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. And he says, hey, look, you know, I'm trying to, I want to sell my sign shop. We're getting older. We're ready to retire. Mm-hmm. We have investments. We have all this other stuff. We're, we're ready to travel and be done with this mm-hmm. you know, work and stuff. He was like 70 or something. And so 
I, I looked at it all and I said, I called my wife. I said, Hey, baby, check this out. <laughs> you know, check this out. If we got the, she's like, Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The guy said, Look, I'll sell you this whole entire thing for X amount. I said, Okay, I'll take it. He said, No, 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 no. You can't just take it. You don't know. If, you don't know anything about the business. I don't know anything about you. You don't know anything about me. You don't know anything about the yeah, business. Yeah, and do you, house. do you ever? I know, right? Yeah. And I did it. With your son. <laughs> yeah. And so he's like, "Why don't you do this? Why don't you come to work for me, just temporarily, mm -hmm. and let's pretend like you own the business, like you're buying the business. You own it. Mm -hmm. I want you to go make some business cards. Okay. Put your name and owner underneath it. Mm -hmm. I want you to go out. I'll show you the price list. I kind of tell you a little bit about it." And I'll set you out there, and you just start selling it. Because right. he had let the business die down. Because he was trying to retire. He, he, he was yeah. just going to close it. And then at the end, he decided, well, let's let's sell it real cheap just to get rid of our equipment and right. our, our tables and our this and that, all the stuff. Mm -hmm. He said, so so he's letting it die down. He said, you got to build the business back up. The business was only doing like $50,000 a year in total sales at the end where he, where he was about to shut it out. Right. And the only reason he was keeping it going was for the – old lady that worked for him mm -hmm. he had one lady that worked there she was he was just keeping her with some income yeah. they, they were fine th themselves so he's like why don't you come to work for me i'll pay you a commission on everything you sell and you work on trying to work you know build this up and we'll mm -hmm. see in a month or two or whatever if you want to buy the business so he taught you to fish instead of just getting you to fish exactly he put me in there let me interject there though so were you still an electrician at that point or you'd already separated i'd already separated from that and i was doing the advertising trying thing. to get by yeah, yeah i was trying to get by having that. a paycheck to not really yeah. having one my my uh my credit cards were racking up right you know i think most entrepreneurs can attest to oh, that yeah. period yeah, because there is a period of time absolutely. where i mean it's fe mm -hmm. feast or famine yeah and you it's either it's and that's exactly what it was. Turn it off the pot. I mean, essentially, like, exactly. it's figuring out, do what you need to do to get it done, and yeah. you just grind out at yeah, it. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. So, so I went to work for him, and I went and made some business cards and did all the stuff, and I'm just going out there. I'm hustling. Mm -hmm. No pun intended. <laughs> so I'm just hustling, right? I'm hustling, I'm hustling, I'm hustling. I'm getting jobs left and right. I mean, right. It, was, it was like I literally did nothing but walk in a business because this is my sales tactic. Mm -hmm. I'm not a high pressure salesman, period, at mm -hmm. all, none whatsoever. So my sales tactic is I take a, a, a business card in, nothing more than a business card. Mm -hmm. I walk in a business, say, even if the sign on the front says no soliciting, I don't care, I'm walking in. <laughs> That's so, a suggestion. It's yes, not really. <laughs> exactly. Well, I'm not selling anything. Nope. I don't have You're something to make relationships. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not selling anything yep. other than myself. Right. So, <laughs> so I walk in with a business card and I say, hey, um, I just want to introduce myself. Yep. You know, I got this little business going. Mm -hmm. I make signs. I mean, it's pretty simple stuff. So right. here's my card. If I can ever do anything for you, please let me know. You guys have a great day. And I turn around and walk out. Right. Simple as that. That right there got me more business than sitting trying to hard sell really? somebody. Yeah, man. I got so, so much business with that. I'm and, and generally, I wouldn't, but that makes me want to share a story because this is like twice in my life that I heard this. So when I was much younger, so I think I came to Houston. I was working for an Italian coffee company. Our top sales guy that we would drop in different cities and name was Giuseppe Chiletto. Great to meet him. Our, our top Italian <laughs> coffee sales guy. So I got turned loose one day in Dallas with Giuseppe. I'm like 32 years old. I'm scared for my sales. I'm scared where this is going. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going to see Giuseppe in action. Like, like you going in with the business yeah. card, right? <laughs> and, he, and he goes into the restaurant and we talk to the hostess. We ask for the manager. The manager comes up and he says, hey, my name's Giuseppe. I sell coffee. Like, that's, 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 that's all niche. you do? That's your spill? <laughs> and so we leave us and said, exactly, that. that's your spill. And he said, well, what did you expect? <laughs> I'm really sad you didn't do that in an Italian accent. Well, I, I Italian. can. I wish I could. <laughs> but, but no, so, I mean, you, you're absolutely right. Like, yeah. what you were doing was go in and just, hey, let's, is there a you match do, here? You'll so do more speak? doing that than trying to high pitch sell somebody. Right. For me. Because it turns them off. It yeah. turns it off. Yeah. And, and for me, I'm the hardest sell. Mm -hmm. Man, I tell you what, when I bought my house, when I buy my cars, when I buy anything, I don't care what it is. When I buy anything, I am a hard sell. When you come and, and try to sell me something, you better not be a salesman. Because mm -mm, okay? it's not about the sale. No. Nope. It's not about the sale. I will turn off and shut down because you know what? You're not the only Chevy, Chevy dealership. Mm -hmm. You're not the only person that can sell an iPhone. You're not the only person that can do any of this stuff. And you start selling me like that, mm -hmm. and you start being all stupid and start 
all fake and all this other stuff, I'm out. Definitely. I'm gonna go find the next guy. Absolutely. You know, a million different people are selling the same thing. I think salespeople get salespeople. We get the stigma that we're arrogant. We come in with that arrogant feeling, like that push, mm -hmm. that high push. Yeah. The yeah. high push is arrogance on some level, and uh, it's not confidence, and it's and it's turns people off because at the end of the day, it's not about the sale; it's about the person yeah. and the relationship. Because and it's, you don't, and it's, it's kind of fake. If you get it, that's a one-time sale usually. That's not a seven year the rest <clears> of the relationship right. Right. yeah yeah but you never know how what they have i mean everybody's in my opinion like a tree yeah right i mean it's kind of the same thing it's yeah. kind of where you went with jail and everybody else it's a tree there's branches yeah but um in regards to good promotions you start you joined good promotions when so eight years ago in june june 1st mm -hmm. eight years ago um i had my business going See when I when I was dealing with the old man and I and and all this was built I was building that business up mm -hmm. I was getting business left and right I mean it was just growing like crazy the sign business is it, it's really easy to sell somebody a sign mm -hmm. because everybody needs a sign right if that's in a business you need a sign yes you can't do mm -hmm. business without some kind of signage you know right I mean? so you got to have a sign so it was really easy to start building the business up so after three months uh, I went to Mr. Jim and said hey. I'm ready. I'm ready to buy the business. He said, yes, you are. I gave him $5,000 down payment, mm -hmm. and he owned or financed the rest of the, the business for me. So <clears throat> within the first year, I had him paid off, and mm -hmm. I owned the business. So I ran the business out of my, well, at first I ran it out of my house, mm -hmm. inside my house. Uh, I'm sure your wife is really happy about yeah. that. Yeah. You guys have been, <laughs> you guys have been to our shop, and you yes. see my, my huge sign table? Yes. Mm -hmm. That sign table was in my master bedroom. I am. Oh I would love to talk to your wife yes, about that. That is no joke. I had that table in my she's master. A saint. Yeah, that was in my master bedroom, along with a tape. I mean, a um, a desk mm -hmm. and a computer and a vinyl cutter. Mm -hmm. In my in my pantry, I have a huge walk-in pantry. Was there the bed in under, there? No, no, <laughs> under all the shelves were all my rolls of vinyl. Oh, wow. In my uh, in my dining room, uh, beside my uh, dining room table. Up against the wall there was all my uh, sheets of like the core class and yeah. aluminum and stuff. All right. So I had That's all, I, so it was all over my house, right? Mm -hmm. And inside my bedroom, I have a king size bed, mm -hmm. and I have this twelve foot by four foot table with a sewing machine on it for sewing <laughs> banners. There were several nights that we would move my entire dining room table and chairs and everything out of the dining room into the kitchen part mm -hmm. to where we'd have that whole section, the floor. It was, it, you know flat floor the right. or whatever, and we would make big oversized banners on the floor in the middle of my dining room i kept hearing we though so your wife was, my wife and i did this lot, we, we right? did this together at the beginning and so we built the business up and we and we did really great and we bought a well we got a building for the back um like a barn style right. portable like a workshop, shop like a little workshop. yeah like a workshop mm -hmm. so we put that in the back moved the shop out there and we ran that for several years and did really good and we started doing a lot of wholesale work. Well, Good Promotions was one of our wholesale customers. Mm -hmm. We were doing digital printing for them, uh -huh. signs and stuff. They were mm -hmm. already getting into t-shirts. Mm -hmm. They started out making rubber stamps mm -hmm. in their garage. Well, what's the market for rubber stamps? It's pretty darn good, actually. Is it really? Yeah. Uh, we've got a couple of big corporate accounts that for years and years and years, for the last 14, 15 years, they just continue to send all their stores, corporate stores, um, restaurants usually, mm -hmm. and um, uh, like Papa's restaurant. Okay. So all the oh, Papa's, Papa. Papacitos, Papa's barbecue, Papa's oh. Papa. Oh, y'all are burgers, gonna start talking about food that Papa's I can't this, eat. Papa's that, all that <laughs> stuff. So they order rubber stamps, and so that's where the goods, good promotions, the goods, the goods, Christy goods, print goods. So they started this, and they were making rubber stamps out of their office. I mean, out of their uh, garage. Well, they started getting more into promotional products like pens and cups and koozies. So they got an account with doing that. And then they started, oh, making a few T-shirts here and there, and they were doing some business cards here and there, that kind of stuff. Well, my, my company, Quality Banner, we already made all those same things. We, made, we, we did T-shirts, mm -hmm. we did business cards, we did promotional products, and we did signs. We did all that stuff. Well, uh, Good Promotions was one of my wholesale customers. And as a matter of fact, I was one of their wholesale customers. So I was buying T-shirts uh, from them, T-shirt printing from them, uh, and they were buying... Um, signs, signs for from me. you. Oh. And we got it. We had a really great relationship. You know, we were doing stuff. I mean, I would work till three o'clock in the morning. They would show up at my house, oh, three o'clock in the morning to pick up baseball banners for 
the parade, you know, baseball mm -hmm. parade, little league baseball yeah. parade. The next morning. The next day. Wow. Yeah. That's they, commitment. Yeah. They they would send they would tell me, Hey Marnie, can you make this banner for me? Yeah, I can make this banner for you. And the email would come through and I have like five or six banners. And you know, it's like I thought it was one. They send me all they just send me all of them. And so I'd stay up till three or four o'clock in the morning making banners wow. because the parade was at eight o'clock the next morning. Wow. And so they'd come you know, over to my house at three or four in the morning to pick mm -hmm. up all the banners that we finished, you know. So we did that for a while and then my business just grew to where I was outgrowing my little shop mm -hmm. in the backyard. So I, I had a lot of customers. I had a lot of local people. Um, some of them are JLA agents now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that like I, I used to make their stuff, you know, for their baseball kids and all wow. that sort of stuff years ago. Right. And so, um, so my, my business was outgrowing the backyard. So I decided, all right, so I'm going to go open a retail location. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to the guy at Good Promotions. I said, "Hey man, I'm about to open a location." He's like, "Whoa, hold up, you're gonna, you're, you're like my only competition. Like everybody knows you're who you are." Out. Yeah. So I, I, I said, "Well, you know, why don't you buy my business? Why don't you buy me out?" And we'll, you know, we'll. And so we talked for you know a month or two. A couple months went by, and we just kind of talked and maybe talked about some different options or whatever. And then <clears throat> he and his wife talked, and they decided, "All right, you know what? We'll just buy you out." We'll buy your company, we'll buy all your customers, and you can stay on for a month. Uh, or no, wait a minute, it was, it was three months. Mm -hmm. Our contract was three months. One month full-time, mm -hmm. one month part-time, mm -hmm. and one month, the, the third month was as needed on a, on a contract. Uh, yeah, you know, just like a PRN. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the first month I was there, when they finally decided, they signed a contract, they paid me the money, everything was good, said, all right. We loaded up everything out of my shop, moved it over there. Mm -hmm. Everything was good. Um, that first month, after that first 30 days, I told him, I said, hey, um, you know, next week I start part-time. He said, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Can we rethink mm -hmm. that? <laughs> okay, so we're not quite ready for that. So he and his wife had talked, and <clears throat> they were like, can we just, can you just stay here? Like, can we keep you on? Mm -hmm. And you just, you know, stay with us. I said, well, okay, sure. So Got nothing came, else to do. Yeah, you know, I mean, I had <laughs> Why some not? Other, I had some other plans as we were talking earlier about all the buying and selling crap I always right, do, you know, right. Craigslist and all that stuff. I'm always buying and selling stuff. I oh. Buy and sell guitars, amps, drums. I've sold keyboards. I've sold saxophones. I've sold cars, motorcycles, four wheelers. I'll buy and sell anything. Everything right. I got for sale. So. I was just going to start something else and just do my own thing. Mm -hmm. Well, they asked, hey, you know, why, why don't we just kind of come to agreement and stay around here? That's okay. So that was eight years ago. And you are still there. It's a deal for you because they cashed you out when they bought your business. And then you yeah, got yeah so it worked out. Now. I mean, I still I still run a lot with the business. You know, they, they handle a lot. They do. I, I don't have to do taxes no more. That, that's a that's huge that's Amazing. huge. And you probably don't have to do payroll. And all that yeah, I don't have to do any of that. So they ha they handle all of, all of that. Uh, they they've gone through some trouble. It's just Christy Good that owns the business now. Mm -hmm. And so she does a lot. She handles a lot. She does a lot of production. She's she's a behind the scenes person. Mm -hmm. Is she in the shop yeah. usually? Christy is. She is. <clears throat> well, she's there most of the time. But when she's there, she's back behind there the, working. Yeah. So she's she's all about the production side of things but she handles all the taxes mm -hmm. all the payroll all the all of that kind of stuff that most people don't see mm -hmm. she handles all of that she's a she's a totally behind the scenes i asked her to come with me today yeah. she's like i'll screw that up i ain't i'll say something <laughs> stupid you know, i'm not gonna do that uh, and so, have that, you met us i was like have, uh <laughs> yeah. in, open mouth insert foot all yeah. the time but she can print the crap out of some shirts and and do something she can take some jobs and knock them out i mean she's really good with that that's what she does so you're the pretty face well, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm kidding no offense no bad, yeah. no bad. i'm not that christy yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, she she's she's that person behind the scenes and she's very um hands-on mm -hmm. and so when it that's comes good, to though. yeah when it comes to being the front person she can do it when necessary, but she'd rather not, and she doesn't. You know, she doesn't need to because I'm there. Yeah. And so, 
you know, she's like, hey, you can take care of that. You go do this. And, you know, I was a member of BNI for a couple of years, All and right. I was the BNI face. Right. Um, you know, anything like the JLA boot camps we do, I do. Yeah, those. I would say you're there. All, all those kinds of things, you know, that's that's my position. So I, I handle more, I handle most of the sales. We and the, two, create, the creative side, too. Yeah, so I handle most of that. I do a lot of the office management stuff, like different accounts with some of our vendors, um, you know, our merchant accounts, just all those kind what of things. About manage, managing staff, does that fall under you, or do you have managers that report to you? Uh, no, we we have we have. I'm a I'm a manager, and we have two other managers besides Christy. Mm -hmm. Christy's just the owner of it all, so she's the ultimate you know go to. But we have a production, I mean a, a screen print production manager, mm -hmm. which is her son-in-law. Then we have an embroidery production manager, which mm -hmm. is her ex sister-in-law, mm -hmm. and then we have the sign production manager, which is me. And then she is the overall owner of the company. Everybody has their hats they wear. Everybody yeah. has lots of hats that they wear. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a certain amount of things that uh, each one of us do that the other person doesn't, you know, as far as the management team goes. So there, there are certain things that I do as far as the creative side of things and, 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 and art, but they do a lot of that too. So, you know, Got it. It's just a different, different part of the business. They're not dealing with realtors and their signs, which is what you guys mostly know me for. Right. Yeah. There's way more to it than. I feel like there's way part. more to you too. Than yeah. just, <laughs> than there might be. There, I'm like, how much time do we, we have? We don't have actually. enough time for those. <laughs> <stories. laughs> where I wanted to go with this, though. Right. So, yes. So tell us about Mike outside of good promotions. Obviously, we talked about an added bonus like you have. Yeah. So bringing that up, what what um, uh, <clears throat> she was just, Robin was just talking about was you know the motorcycle wreck. So I love motorcycles. I've I've ridden motorcycles most of my life, whatever, but. I had a time where I didn't ride because I was, you know, having young kids and all that stuff. So it was just one of those kind of things. Well, we'll put that to the side so I don't wreck and die or something or lose my kids. Yeah, because you know. that would be bad. Yeah. Yeah. Not a fun day. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm back on bikes. I've been back on bikes for several years now. And, you know, this recent, uh, well, aside from the wreck part, but I, I love to play drums. Mm -hmm. I played drums in church for 15 years or more. Uh, I played drums when I was growing up with a couple of, you know, jam bands. Mm -hmm. uh, I played guitar. Um, I, and I just, I just live a normal, regular, everyday Joe kind of life, you know. So, I have, so do you ride with other guys, or just buddies, or just you guys were on a trip when this this incident? Took yeah, I'm not, I'm not part of any kind of gangs or groups. Well, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we're part of like yeah. the clubs or five. Yeah, dudes like those those with. neat vests that I see. Yeah, no, when they're riding down thirteen, fourteen. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't have a vest with with like yellow banners on it or a skull <laughs> or like yeah. but you can make those I can you can make them yeah. you should shameless plug you should you should go and find them find them and say hey i've got this i can do this yeah so i, I mostly ride just with sense myself sense and my life. friends you know i've got a couple friends and, and buddies that kind of ride and we just kind of do a little something you know here and there and so well but most guys that ride i mean you want to ride two three four people and it's a click right i mean sometimes you go out by yourself but it's yeah better with a group right i'm i'm kind of an everyday rider right. so i like to ride my bike every day to work that right. i can as long as it's not going to rain sure i like to ride the bike right so i'm a daily driver uh, on motorcycles a lot of a lot of bikers are they only ride when they're going on some kind of ride or trip or like a weekend ride. Or yeah, or, or spe special occasion kind of thing. <clears throat> and that's fine, but I like to ride all the time. I, I'm just a daily driver, so uh -huh. I'd rather drive my motorcycle than my truck when well, I can. Yeah, you know? no, absolutely. <clears throat> and I, I work like 10 minutes from home. Right. I literally work right down the road. So I have never ridden a motorcycle. I, mean, I have sat on one for a prop photo for the <laughs> JLA po po uh, party when I was Sandy. <laughs> No, well, you weren't there for it. <laughs> my husband. Well, no, no, no. We took a picture on my neighbor's Harley oh, beforehand. So we're, we're yeah, yeah, yeah. It was beforehand. Yeah. Um, so we're on Facebook Live. I just wanted to go on Facebook Live for a second and see. Um, I thought you meant we had a motorcycle at the party and I missed it or something. Yeah. <laughs> Mike brought it in and he likes me more, so he let me use it as a photo yeah, it, prop. It would be kind of weird if I sit on Mike's bike. That's sort of a no-no, I would think. I it mean, is. we just got real cool. close for a photo, <laughs> and it felt a little awkward in, in that moment. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Um, now, but with the how? I mean, with motorcycles, you're you can get into accident. I mean, how frequent is an accident with a motorcycle? Because I mean, you've been you had been riding for a long time. Was this your first accident that you had ever gotten well, into? I've been in an accident when I was 13. 
but they were like, yeah. that's like a few days ago. But, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't really count. So I mean, there it's not it's not one of those things where you're there, there's more car wrecks than there's motorcycles. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You know, I mean, really? Oh yeah, I mean, car wrecks are all day, every day. So I mean, motorcycle wrecks are it's one of those things where. I mean, I've been driving cars forever and ever and ever, and I've been in one car wreck way back a long time ago. Right. And so it's kind of the same thing. Whenever you're in a on a motorcycle, it's it's no different than being on a car. You just you're just out driving on the road. So you have just as much uh, of an opportunity to have an accident on a motorcycle as you do uh, in a car. Yeah, so it's all it's all the right. same. So it, it's it's just a matter of what you choose to be on that day. Would you, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'd rather be on a motorcycle, you know, so that's all there is to it. Um, so it's not a big deal. You, you don't go around having crashes all day. Every day but yours know? was pretty serious. I mean, I saw photos of it. Well, it, it was, I mean, it could have been way worse. So what were the vacation plans? You told me we were in Arkansas. <coughs> you guys driving out to... We rode all the way to Arkansas. Some of us did. There was there was two riders that took a truck and a, and a camper. Right. A, a toy hauler so there was two bikes in the in the toy hauler mm -hmm. and there was three of us riding bikes all the way up there so we rode bikes up on a monday it's going to like hot springs or where are you going to uh queen queen wilhelmina oh say that Park. five times fast I, yeah, I don't know i don't know right. anything about it it's right. in mina mina arkansas mm -hmm. so it's just there's a lot of mountains up there mm -hmm. with some really awesome roads to ride a motorcycle there, right? yeah. yeah they're like all these mountains, like, I, I don't know, Mount Magazine, Mount Nebo, Mount this, Mount, I mean, all these weird mount, mountains. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I don't know anything about it, but one of the guys with us has been up there before at riding these oh, riding okay. mountains. Mm -hmm. So he, he's an older gentleman. <clears throat> so, you know, we all ride up there on Monday. Then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we ride all day long through the mountains. Mm -hmm. And some awesome riding, like, I mean, Riding up a mountain on some super curvy roads oh, nice. is freaking awesome. Right. You know, I mean, there's what they call a switchback. Mm -hmm. oh. You're riding and you literally are turning at 180 degrees. Like, <gasps> you can only oh, be no, going no. about not even 10 miles an hour to, and you're going uphill, mm -hmm. like really steep uphill at 180 degree turns. Oh, so you can only be going like 10 miles an hour. You're you're barely going you're barely going fast enough to keep the bike upright. Guardrails and such, or straight off. The no, side? there's no guardrails. I was gonna say I've ridden, I've, I've been in Arkansas, and those yeah. roads up in those mountains. Uh -huh, yeah. uh -uh. But you were in a car. I was in a car, <laughs> and I wasn't driving. Yeah. But it was, I couldn't even imagine. Yeah. So there's like skid marks all over the road. Oh my god. <laughs> and you just don't want to be one of those. Skid right. Marks. So it's pretty fun though. It's pretty awesome. So it's not like for the super beginner rider or nothing. So, but it's really fun. It's just right. a blast. So. We did that Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We visited several Harley stores up around the area that we've never been to, and we just, you know, you just go around, you pick up a little poker chip or, you know, a so t-shirt. So your wife have a bike too? Does no. she ride, or she rides behind on, on she that bike? She doesn't ride with me. Oh. My wife is a my wife is a non biker. Is a non biker? Is she against it completely? Absolutely not. Oh, okay, so she's just totally, a non biker. She's totally cool with me riding, <clears throat> and she has ridden around the neighborhood with me like twice. She's ridden way more than ever. But that's it. She that's it. I can't go over 35 okay. on the bike in the neighborhood. So You really shouldn't be going over 35 in the neighborhood yeah, anyways. Yeah, yeah. It's True. technically 20 or 30. Okay. Like. Okay, Mama Robin. <laughs> like, I don't know what neighborhood you're growing up in, but that neighborhood. I live out in the woods, man. They go like 80 in my neighborhood. Oh. <laughs> yeah. but no, it's like so, chicken with the motorcycle. Yes, Turn off the lights yeah, and see exactly. what happens. So, I mean, it, it was just great. You know, we had a great time. We ate at some really cool places, you know, like yeah. old, old, you know, country stores that have been around since oh, the nice. 1800s and just all the stuff, and they're still in operation today. So we, it's really cool. It, it was just fun to do all that. I've never done that before. Right. So it was really fun. And this last day on Thursday, we were riding for 14 hours already. Mm. You, you were on your way back. Yeah, we were on our way back. So we had already went all over Arkansas, all over the place. We ended up north, way north of Arkansas, close to the border. And we decided, all right, let's it's time to head back. It was like 8 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we had already ate dinner and everything. All right, it's time to head back. So one of the guys, there was four of us on this mm -hmm. particular ride. There was five all together. One guy stayed back at the at the lodge to go hiking. Mm -hmm. He's my son-in-law. He loves to hike. So he right. stayed back by himself to hike. So there was four of us on that ride all day. Well, one guy said, man, my butt hurts too much. I'm done riding for the day. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to find a hotel and stay up here for the night. 
So I'll ride back. I'll see y'all in the morning. So the three of us head back, and we said, okay, we can't take the mountain roads. It's dark. Yeah. There's a lot of animals. There is um, no street lights, right. which could have been a good thing for me. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> but it's, it, it, So let's just take the highway, and let's just head on back to the lodge. Let's, you know, it'll be a safe, quick trip back. Right. Yeah. Not so much. It didn't happen that way. No. So as we're cruising back, it's dark. It's about 1020. We're about halfway back there about 10 20 a kid lost control of his vehicle mm-hmm. driving too fast spun out hit a light pole a metal light pole on the highway knocked it down hit it so hard it fell down across the highway oh. right in front of me oh and you oh. <clears throat> so at 70 ish i hit this pole dead on i mean just straight on were you the first to hit it because one of the other routers hit it as well i i i was the first to hit it i led the group the entire trip Mm -hmm. i had my phone on my bike plugged in to power source so i had gps gps running the whole time so i was able to lead the whole group Mm -hmm. all week long it was great and so i was in the front so i cracked that pole at 70 miles an hour Mm -hmm. when i hit the pole it moved it out of the way a little bit so the guy directly behind me was able to barely miss the pole Oh, and then the third guy behind us, uh, he missed the pole, but he laid his bike down Mm -hmm. while missing the pole. Right. And as he was sliding, his bike caught a groove in the road and it just slammed him over the other side. It flipped him over real really Mm -hmm. hard and slammed him over over the other side and he ended up breaking a bunch of stuff. He's he's my son-in-law's dad. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Yeah. Now the truck, the the truck, because I saw pictures on Facebook, the truck looked like it was almost split because it hit the pole but it looked like there was a piece of it that kind of almost wrapped around the pole well it was a car it was a car i thought it was yeah. a truck no, i don't know what picture wow. you saw maybe it, it was wasn't a, it maybe was it was a, a car little, i've slept since then it was Let's a little real. honda civic like an 04 honda civic or something maybe it was there, there was a rescue truck in the picture or something maybe it was a little 17 year old kid just and and he came out running out there and he was like on the phone with his mom. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, mom. Wow. I was going too fast. I lost control. I hit the pole. The pole fell. The motorcycles hit the pole and they crashed. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. Wow. Yeah. Well, and then fast forward. You still you were in a um, uh, cast up until recently, right? Well, I just had a splint. I had a little splint on my left hand because mm-hmm. I, I broke a bone on my left hand, my right finger and a rib and three toes on my right foot just all fractured nothing and that's all you came out with because it could have been so much well not to mention the road rash yeah the road rash was Mm -hmm. about uh like right in front of me the road rash the road rash was pretty bad my arms i I, I, for the first two weeks i thought were just going to ignite they burn so bad. How uh, do they treat this? It's not like they release it. Is it no. a burn victim? They can't. They don't. No, they, don't. they just. Uh, I mean, I got out of the emergency room that same night. Mm-hmm. They they did X-rays and they came in and said some little like Chinese dude came in and said, "Okay, you have uh, you know broke hand, broke finger, three broke toe. We send you home." I said, "Okay." I mean, hey, <laughs> like, no jello or not to go. No, with? no. <laughs> I mean, they, they wrapped me up with some gauze and some bandage and, and put a boot on my my foot and. And, Off you went. And sent me out. And the other guy, he stayed in the hospital for a week. He broke his pelvis, oh. tailbone, three ribs, a clavicle, and had some stitches above his eye. Ouch. And he's older, so he right. had a harder time yeah, dealing with it. But he, I mean, broke his pelvis and a, and a, and a tailbone, so it was pretty Ooh. bad. <clears throat> but, yeah, they just sent me right on home and just wrapped me up. And Peace out. So I just kind of had way. to wrap up and, and wear little splints on everything and stuff mm-hmm. and, and just kind of take it easy. Uh, for a while. Uh, easy? Like when you meant you were weed whacking with your splints? I told you about that. You did <laughs> tell me about that. Yeah. Look at you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. I mean, there's only so much you can do to sit around. Like, I you don't from, sit well. No. I worked from home for about two weeks. Right. And, you know, uh, I'm very appreciative to my uh, JLA peeps and all my all my customers that have my back. You know, Because yeah. yeah. I had one customer act kind of stupid on me and say, well, you know, I've been patient. I waited for you for two weeks. I said, okay, well, one week I was on vacation. I told you about that. Right. And the second week, man, it was like hurting, dude. So right. You were in a motorcycle accident. Yeah. Like, back up. Yeah, like, hold up for just one second. Like, like step give off. me a second. Yeah. Like, I just had a wreck. I'm pretty I'm pretty hurting right now. I'm sitting up, like, all swollen in my 
recliner in my house, you know. Right. And they said, no, I've, I've, I've been patient enough. I'm going somewhere else. I said, all right, cool. Bye, so I posted on that. I posted on Facebook. <laughs> bye, Felicia. Yeah. Bye. And Go. I had all my JLA peeps, mostly my JLA peeps, were like having my back. Oh, I think, yeah. I saw that post. Yeah, yeah, and, we were, I was one of the ones. And, Amber Cool was like, who do I need to throw punch? Like, I think I, said, I think me. I think that I saw her. I yeah. saw John say something. And I was like, "Who mm-hmm. do I need to go and cut?" Yeah, I will cut so you. So I had the coolest time. Like after it happened, I had John Alter. I had, and, and I don't know if this is forbidden words, but I had Judy Hayes with Remax. I had all these different customers and friends. I call them friends because they've been my customers forever. Absolutely. Like I've been in the business for fifteen years. I have customers that still buy from me. For 15 years right yeah and so i had all these customers hitting me up like mike do you need some help mm-hmm. hey mike i've got a trailer john told me i had several people tell me mm-hmm. john was like hey dude i've got a trailer it's got four foot sides it's got this i got that i got i will go up there and get your bike for you You need some help right. tell me where it's at give me an address yeah i will get the bike you tell me what you need i'm there for you you know i had so many give the shirt off their back yeah john, uh, yeah john would absolutely so give many people say hey i will totally hook you up you tell me what you need I'm there, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and the it was, support is incredible. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. I, I was very, which is a testament to why it's about the relationships. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That it's about the relationships because right. you wouldn't have gotten that support if you had just focused on the on the minute detail of everything mm-hmm. and not building the. I have a lot of people that you. say, "Hey, Mike, you know that's a really good price, man. I, I paid. I have a, a lady recently bought some signs from somewhere else, and the sign was like." Literally more than double the cost of my car. Really? Not even a joke. And she bought three of them. I was like, holy crap. Well, I heard the price you gave out earlier on the phone for that item, and I, I've been paying double that for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My so, car wrap's pretty good, which I kind of yeah, wish was here today. It's, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's like, you know, and this has been my thing since the very beginning. Anybody, anybody, can sell you something one time. Yes. It doesn't matter. I can come in and sell you anything, a pair of shoes, a motorcycle, a house, whatever. I can sell you anything one time. And I might even can sell it to you twice if you're done, if you're done there, you know, for this kind of price, right? Right. But the moment that you find out that you could have, that you kind of got screwed and you could have bought that same thing way cheaper or whatever, right? You're done with that person. Right. You're done with that. So, with yeah, us, you feel cheated. Exactly, you feel cheated. Mm-hmm. So with us, I mean, there are cheaper people out there. We're not the cheapest by far. You you're know, the there, best. There, there are some out there that are cheaper. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> There's people Stroking out there. You're the best, but you really are the best. Yeah. There are some people out there that are cheaper, but take for instance, this card. Okay, they Ooh. are cheaper. You can get some cheap cards that way. They're decent. You know, whatever. But there's so much that you got to do on your own, mm-hmm. and you screw it up, or you don't make it look how you Everybody want it. Everybody has the same stuff. thing. Everybody like has the, the same thing. thing that I did. It's, exactly. Right. So, so there are ways of getting things cheaper, but it's not the best way of doing it. You know. But cheaper doesn't always mean more cost effective. Right? It doesn't. It you doesn't. get what you pay for. That's right. So our our tactic behind all this is we want a fair price. We are in business to make money, so we have to make money, but we want you to be able to have. A fair price so you pay a fair price we make a little bit of money everybody's happy in the long run and how that works better for us like i said earlier 75 or more percent of our business comes from referrals so let me let me ask you right there and we'll start to get to the wrap up so with all you've learned grooming up to get in the side business what you've learned being in the side business i'm sure most of you have i mean even recently motorcycle expert what would you share with somebody, a new entrepreneur, maybe somebody that's in that startup phase that you are 15 plus years ago? Speak a word of wisdom to nobody. What, what would you share? <laughs> Treat people right. Just take care of people. That's all they want. You know, I have so many people, John, for instance, mm-hmm. every single day. I don't think there's a day goes by. <laughs> I get a phone call that says, hey, John said to call you and you know what to do. <laughs> because we take care of people, you know. People come in our office all the time. Hey, I need this, and I have no idea what I'm doing. 
<laughs> and, <laughs> and all these places online, no, there's no help there. Mm-hmm. So if you take care of people, mm-hmm. like, uh, you ever heard of Alignable? Mm-hmm. Alignable is kind of like LinkedIn. It's oh, kind yeah, of yeah, a yeah, social yeah, media type that, thing. Right. So I answer a lot of questions. I, I, I comment on a lot of questions on there. They do a lot mm-hmm. of like uh, questions like people ask them, how do you do this? How do you do that? How do you mm-hmm. get this business? How do you advertise? How do you do this? So I like to comment on those a lot because my experience is you take care of your people. Mm-hmm. You do their business yep. or yep. whatever. You know, I have people that will wait for a sign for three to four weeks. Right. They can go down to, exactly. Me. Right there, right. I did. You can go down to, to one of these um uh, what do you call it? Like a, a franchise? Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to name the name, yep. but you go down to a franchise, man, they'll spit you out some crap right then. Right. You can get it right now. Mm-hmm. But it's going to be exactly that crap. Well, and the work you did for me for the Hustle City sign, I mean, I wouldn't have known where else to go for that. Exactly. You know, and I'm sure other sign shops probably mm-hmm. could have done it, but I didn't even know to yeah. ask other places. And, and more times than not, I have a lot of people say, you know, I just, I tried this other place and they're crap. Mm-hmm. I tried this place and they talked to me like this. They talked to me like I was a legit. They mm-hmm. tried, you know, I did this and I did that. And I've had people say, Mike, I, I can't wait for three weeks for the sign, so I'm going to go down the road. Okay. And I'm, I'm cool with that. Like, hey, go down the road. And then they come back and they're like, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, yeah, I kind of got screwed on that deal. So um, can, we right. start, can we start the three weeks again? Yeah, now because, it's six because or now seven. Because you still got to wait another three weeks from this time period. Okay? <laughs> I can't backtrack you. Yeah, okay? no, we can't. So, so your, the line. your three weeks starts over. So you should have just stuck with me to begin with. So. Yeah. But it's, yes. one, it's one of those things where you take care of your people no matter what. You do them right, and they'll stick around. They'll always come back, and they'll send you lots of business. Mm-hmm. It's build the relationship. That's it's build the it. relationship. Mm-hmm. So for those that may be listening, how can they get in touch with you with good promotions? Where can they find you? So the office number, 281-592-4398. That's kind of the best way to do it. Um, our website, goodpromos.com. Mm-hmm. Um, that is, it's pretty much got a good explanation of all the things we do. Mm-hmm. And then there's a big red button at the top, right corner. That's uh, You click there, it goes to our promotional products. Mm-hmm website so you can go there and search all of our pens cups koozies all that. no one take the heart stress balls of the night the heart stress balls are awesome i use that to rehabilitate my left hand i very nice he sent me a photo of that the, yeah the robin duke heart stress ball heart <laughs> I, I, I sit there and work my left hand like crazy to try to get my uh, range of motion and strength back i'm gonna need one of those now that yeah. i'm working more closely with them. i've got yeah, i've got one yeah. in the office you might need to yeah it goes <laughs> really well with me i feel like people just yeah. then you know it's associated I'll, heart I'll, heart and stress <laughs> No pun intended, but I'll stress the stress relief. It's really good. It works really good. So, yeah, you can go on the website. You can go on the, my email, sales at goodpromos.com. Uh, you're more than welcome. I, I'm one of those kind of guys. I, I give my cell phone number, mm-hmm. 713-376-7645. You can call me on my cell phone almost all times of the night. So, you know, don't call me at 3 o'clock because I won't answer your call. Right. They can also come and sit down with you because you do personal consultations for creative, for branding and design. Mm-hmm. That yeah. was something that I wanted to highlight because a lot of people don't do that. No, they don't no, take no. the 30 to 45 minutes and ours, I think ours is an hour because I talked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about social media sites? You guys are on Facebook, I think, We're right? on Facebook, good promos. Mm-hmm. We're on Facebook. We don't really kind of do Twitter and stuff. I have a personal Twitter, but I mean, yeah, Twitter and LinkedIn and uh, Alignable, and uh, I don't think I have a personal Instagram, but we, we don't really do too much for that. It's mostly just Facebook. So it's just Facebook and your website as well. As well, and they can go to the Hustle City Facebook page because we're going to link up some. We'll link up some stuff there yep. as well. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And Robin, you want to take us out? Yes. All right. Thanks, Mike, for joining. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. Thanks All for right. having That's me. Robin Dupart with JLA Realty and Texas Real Estate Dude, and we're out till next time.